there's never too early of an age or too early of a stage in where you're feeling these symptoms come on rather than trying to just scroll and then hope and cross your fingers that you figure it out yourself. It's like going to see a physical therapist for at least a few sessions to be guided in what you need can be huge for the body. Welcome back everyone to another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Doc Jen. And today we're going to be talking about Osgood Schlatter, which is pain in the front of the knee that a lot of young kids might get. What is it? Why does it happen? And what can you do about it? Let's find out. Is pain at the front of the knee, particularly in adolescence, active <laughs> adolescence. And yes. We have been asked about this, so we're doing a podcast on it, and we want to yeah. help you to understand what is going on, what some of those risk factors may be, and what you can start to do about it, especially if you've got kids who are active, who may develop this. There are a lot of people that through just those developmental years will get that kind of bump in the front of the shin. If you follow your shin all the way up to the top, kind of where your knee is at, you might feel this little bump. And that is called the tibial tubercle. And it's where your kneecap essentially attaches into your lower leg. It is an overuse or a chronic injury. So it's going to develop slowly. You're going to notice the pain come on little by little mm -hmm. until it gets to the point where it's just like, wow, this is kind of like unbearable. Or when I go and do a lot of jumping, my knees are just burning later at night. And it happens a lot in those specific sports where you see a lot of sprinting, jumping, like basketball, volleyball, football, sprinters, things like that, where they're going to be doing a lot of the repetitive things over and over again, but it's a short burst of really high intensity. And what can be done? I mean, first of all, conservative treatment is always being shown to be like 90% effective. So conservative treatment, yeah. meaning going to see a physical therapist and, and having your kid early in physical therapy. Even in something like this, like time tends to heal and we tend yeah. to get to the end of our developmental stages and something like this can resolve on its own, but going to a physical therapist, they're going to help you do the things like activity modulation or modification, finding those few exercises or stretches that you should be paying attention to like, oh, hey, maybe we should pay some attention to the hamstrings. Like, are the hamstrings going to be able to help us slow down and control that knee a little bit better? They're just going to be able to point out those specific things in your athlete if this is happening in your kid or if this is something that you're experiencing. Like, we're, we're also saying it's common in adolescence. It doesn't yeah. mean it doesn't happen after your adolescence. A physical therapist is just going to kind of help you dice up Part your approach a little bit and yeah see what's really happening and what specifically yeah. you need for your body i feel like for athletes too when you talk about activity modification that's like a death sentence it's like oh it really i have is. to i have to stop and not necessarily you know athletes especially young bodies they're so resilient and they're so plastic and able to take up change so if you've been feeling this developing slowly and slowly, making one small change, adding one little thing into a warm up and a cool down could make the difference on helping you slowly reduce this. Really paying attention to warm ups and cool downs is yeah. so huge, especially in adolescence and sports. Or if you're going to go pick up a basketball game all of a sudden when you're older and you haven't been doing it, right? You sit yeah. at a job all day long. Maybe you go work out, but you haven't been exploding up into extension a lot. Yeah. So it, it could be something there too. Adding in those quad stretches. So I've shown this a lot to the kneeling quad stretch. So you can either do this like against a wall or against like a bench or a couch or a chair, putting a cushion underneath your knee and then thinking of tucking that tailbone under a lot of people think quad stretch i just pull my heel to my bottom but we're forgetting about the quad the longest muscle in your quad actually attaches into your pelvis so how your pelvic positioning is is going to determine how much of a stretch and a pull you get to mm -hmm. all the way into that quad which again attaches all the way down into that patellar tendon so getting into that like rotation tilting that tailbone underneath you just a little bit squeezing that bum just a little bit yeah. to what you can tolerate. Everything too, when we're talking about getting back into activity or starting to address, this is all paying attention to your pain. We're not pushing into pain, we're going to your tolerance. So quad stretching into tolerance, doing some reverse Nordics right mm -hmm. after you quad stretch, like love that one. So think of this as like another term I've, is very popular is modified sissy squat. Yeah. So on your knees, you're kneeling, your your body is straight, and then you just lean back a little bit, leading from your shoulders, mm -hmm. and then pull up. And this is putting a lot of tension into your quads. 
So it's yeah. making them work hard, but it's also stretching them at the same time. You know, mm. hamstrings are so important and it's not just grabbing a strap and pulling that toe back because remember when we do a hamstring stretch and we pull that toe back, that's a lot of nerve tension, not necessarily muscle relaxing. <laughs> it's not really necessarily yeah. stretching in that muscle. So if you are going to do a strap stretch, I would say like putting the strap more toward the heel, relaxing that foot, maybe even having a slight bend in the knee is okay and then pulling back to tolerance. So you feel it just at the back of that upper leg. That's a hamstring stretch, whether you're laying on your mm. back, spending some time relaxing, breathing into that, or you're just gonna do it as a warm up and you do it real quick and kind of like standing, getting your tailbone, almost like a deadlift, Romanian deadlift position. Think of yeah. that, like a complete hip hinge with a slight bend in the knees, digging those hip bones forward into your thighs and sticking your booty out. That's a good hamstring stretch as well. And then right after you do that, I mean, doing that Romanian deadlift style, you are getting some activation, but even going to like a single leg RDL, because then you're really getting activation. You're really using that hamstring to control that knee position. Mm -hmm. So you, if you start out doing some of those quad stretches, get into that reverse Nordic, a little hamstring stretch, get into a single leg RDL or something to get some activation. Those things alone, okay, now go into your sport. See how that changes how you feel afterwards. See if that makes any difference afterwards. A place that a therapist might start you is doing isometric exercises. Yeah. And what isometrics means is you're not moving, but you're putting stress through that knee. You're putting tension through that knee like in a wall sit, mm. like, or you can lay on your back and use bands and pull against the leg, but resist the bend so that you're still using your quad and then let off the band. Different things like that where you're gonna be getting that isometric or even a bridge. Mm -hmm. If you can get into a bridge and then hold, you're putting a lot of great isometric strength and tension through that knee and that's something that might be more comfortable and isometric exercises have been shown to help reduce and modulate pain. We're not only working on a single leg Romania deadlift, but we're also working on single leg squats, getting more pressure, more load onto that tendon and to make it yeah. work a little bit harder, that's gonna really progress you. All of this within pain tolerance. That can be really valuable to an athlete to do in a controlled environment. So when I get out on the field, on the court, my knee might know a little bit better how to react. There's never too early of an age or too early of a stage in where you're feeling these symptoms come on rather than trying to just scroll and then hope and cross your fingers that you figure it out yourself. It's like going to see a physical therapist for at least a few sessions to be guided in what you need can be huge for the body. Hopefully that helped to gain some understanding on what's happening around that knee, that knee pain, what you could start doing today. If you learned anything new, drop a comment, let us know, and make sure you please subscribe because we have so much more good information about diagnoses, pains, and things that can help your body.